Good morning. Once again, it is time for our Sunday School discussion, and we thank you so much for joining us on this morning, and we ask that you join us in a word of prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, Thou who gave us life, Thou who sent His Son to die on the cross, that we might have a right to the tree of life, it is before Your holy presence that we come in this morning. God, we come to honor You, we come to glorify You, because we know that You are God, and there is none other besides You. You're the only one who can save our perishing souls. So we thank you, God, for our life. We thank you for the reasonable portions of heaven, health, and strength. We thank you, O oh God, for wisdom and knowledge that you give to your people. And we ask now that you lead us in this discussion on this morning, that we may be able to find encouragement and inspiration, and most of all, that we might be able to get closer to you and your son, Jesus Christ. That is our aim and that is our purpose. And we ask you, Lord, to just help us to always walk in our purpose. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. We say amen and amen. Good morning once again. Today is Sunday, August 21st, 2022. Continuing in our discussion of our theme for the month, which is glorifying God. And today's topic his workmanship and I think we already know when we say his we know who we refer to his workmanship our lesson scripture is Ephesians 2 and 10 second chapter 10th verse the key verse is the same from the same scripture for we are God's handiwork created in Jesus Christ to do good works which God prepared in advance for us to do the essential question, what is workmanship according to the Bible? The lesson aim, at the end of this lesson, the participant will understand, number one, what being God's workmanship means. Number two, why we are God's greatest creation. The introduction to our lesson for today. Our key verse, Ephesians 2.10 states, that we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Some key things from that verse. First, it says he has created us anew. That means he created us again in Jesus Christ. You recall that the first creation was when he made man, when he created Adam and Eve, the first creation. And then the second one, of course, was when his son, Jesus Christ, died on the cross to pay the price for our sin. And we were, as he would say, born again. We were born in Christ, born of the Spirit, and not a natural birth. So he uh, created us anew when Jesus died for our sin. For we are his workmanship, and this is the English Standard Version of Ephesians 2 and 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Our good works have been prepared beforehand. Can somebody say prearranged? Go to Jeremiah 29 11. Most of you know it. He has the plan for us already. Even when we were in our mother's womb, as he told Jeremiah, God said, I know the plan. He already had the plan for it. And so it says that we can, so we can do good things that have been planned for us even before we came into the world. For we are his workmanship, created in Jesus Christ for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. We are God's workmanship in that he created us. Our exposition. With the right foundation of grace established in Ephesians 2 and 10, we learn that God created us to join him in doing good works. The word handiwork, which is in the King James translate, translation of that scripture, is commonly used today, but it means something that one has made or done. When an artist paints a portrait or a musician composes a symphony, it is his or her handiwork. The word workmanship refers to the degree of skill to which a product is made. So handiwork is something that is made. Workmanship 
deals with the quality of that product that is made. Something can be made with poor workmanship or with quality workmanship. And our aim is to be quality workmanship of God. The psalmist says in Psalm 139 and 14, I will praise you because I have been fearfully and wonderfully made. Fearfully in the Hebrew translation being great reverence with great reverence and respect. And of course, wonderfully being unique and set apart. We are unique. We are fearfully made with great reverence and respect. A work of very high quality is often called a masterpiece. We are God's masterpiece. We were created in his image. Everything God creates is of value. Yet nothing in creation compared to his work creating mankind. Even the angels ask God, Who is man that thou art so mindful of him? Why are you so mindful, so mindful of man? You crowned him with glory and honor. You gave him dominion over all the works of thy hand. Thou hast put all things under his feet. The angels are wondering why God gave man so much prestige and made him over everything and gave him dominion. But God, the angels didn't know, but God knows why he created man and why he created him in his own image. And being in the image of God, we expected to be just like him. We are God's workmanship in that he redeemed us. As God knew they would, mankind rebelled against God's authority. They defined God's workmanship, defiled God's workmanship, and introduced sin into his perfect world. Sin is everywhere. And say that again. Sin is everywhere. But the truth that we are God's workmanship is expressed in the context of our salvation. It is by God's grace that we have been saved through faith and that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast about it. So true that if our works, if we did works on our own, knowing us, we would go around boasting about it. But it's the result of God's gift. It's not us, it's not our works, but it's the result of God's gift that allow us to do the work. So we should not boast on ourselves. For we are his workmanship. The emphasis is on the grace and gift of God. We are not saved by our own works, but the simple fact is that we ourselves are God's work. So we can't be saved by our works. God is the designer and the builder of our faith. We cannot save ourselves. When we allow God's light to shine through us, we show that we are God's workmanship. The lesson applied in the form of questions on this morning. First question, what are the works God wants us to do as his masterpiece? God expects us to accept his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, as our savior. He expects us to give our life to him, and in doing so, develop the character of Christ. God wants us to become more like Christ. Second question, are good works required for salvation? Having been saved by God's grace, through faith, we are saved unto good works. We ought to be careful to maintain good works. Good works are the evidence, not the means of salvation. Once again, good works are the evidence, not the means of salvation. Those who claim to be saved and yet continue to live in sin are fooling themselves. If you are saved, then your works will reflect that. And if there are no works, then you're just fooling yourself. We do not work to become saved. We work because we are saved. Man's work cannot save him. We are saved by grace. And we need to emphasize that it is the grace of God that saved us. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot do enough works to save ourselves. It is through God's grace that we are saved. And once again, we work because we are saved, not to be saved. The last question on our lesson of pride. What does the Bible say about being prepared? 
Scripture tells us that we must always be ready to tell others the good news. We must be prepared, as Paul writes in 2 Timothy 4 and 2, to preach the word. Be ready to do it, whether it's convenient or inconvenient. It's not always going to be convenient for us to preach the word. And when we say preach the word, we're not talking about from a pulpit. You preach the word, you can preach the word every day as you go about your daily activity. Just telling someone about Jesus Christ, telling them about God and his goodness. That is preaching the word. And it's not always convenient. It says that the word will correct, confront, and encourage with patience and instruction. And always trust in God for his guidance. The word will correct. It will confront. And that's what we say. It's not always easy. It, it's sometimes to bring about questions and disagreements and arguments, even though there should not be argument over God's word. Because if God said it, then we have to take it at his word and trust in him for his guidance. We are God's workmanship, made in his own image. How many times have you looked at a child and say, I know who your mama is, or I know who your daddy is, because you look, you act, you walk, and you talk just like him. But have you anyone ever looked at you and, and said, I know you are a child of the king, because you look like you are, you talk like you are, and you act like you are a child of the king. You must be close to him. Has anybody ever done that? Just like we look at other people's children and say, I know who your mom or your dad is. Anyone ever look at you and say, I know who your daddy is, and not talking about your natural daddy, but talking about your father who is in heaven. That would be the greatest compliment that you can receive. Now, all the compliments that you receive or what you do here, we talk about works. If you're complimenting, complimented on the works that you do here, that all that's well and good. But the best compliment is for Jesus when you leave this world, or Jesus to look down on you and say, this is my son, or this is my daughter, whom I am well pleased. And so the word for the day is to always represent God because we are his workmanship. That'll wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep on praying. Keep on helping each other. And we'll talk to you again soon.